Hello, everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal and our weekly segment with Franklin Tucker, editor of the Belmontonian, and I'm your host, Mike Crowley. Um, today, Franklin, uh, we're talking about, among other things, COVID cases are rising. What can you tell us? That's right. Uh, we are seeing an increase in COVID um, in Belmont. Um, uh, it's not at the level as it was back in January and, and December when it took off uh, to the highest levels ever, but it is increasing. So, so how, how concerned do we need to be about these increases? Is the, the variant that we're seeing, is this as uh, risky for people as, as Omicron or the prior variants were? Well, you can catch this variant much easier than you could even the even the Omicron, but it's less serious only in so much that we have so we have such a large amount of people who are vaccinated in Belmont. We're in the 85, 90 percent. Uh, we're seeing most of these infections uh, with uh, kids who are, you know, between the ages of uh, 10 to uh, 24. Uh, but we don't see the, the great amount of uh, hospitalizations as we saw with uh, both the, the the initial um, uh, COVID back in uh, 2020 and uh, the Omicron uh, spike that was in January and February of this month of this year, do, I should say. Do Do we know, Franklin, where where this this current variant is trending? Are cases likely to continue increasing? Um, uh, will things flatten back out again? Well, what hap what, what happened in Europe, and we do lag. We usually lag. Uh, behind Europe by about four to six weeks, they've seen a, a, a big increase. Uh, but uh, once again, as long as hospitalizations stay um, pretty level, then I don't think you'll see a, a real cause for um, uh, moving towards masking again, let's say in our schools. I know I talked to Wesley Chin about this and he said that, uh, you know, he, they're looking at, a, you know, they're not looking at infection rates, they're looking at hospitalization rates. And so okay. far, we haven't seen any, any large increase in that, that way. So we probably won't see masking in the, in the Belmont schools, even though we see an increase in the latest variant. All right. Well, so we'll have to watch and see what happens with uh, this latest variant. Uh, what can you tell us about developments uh, uh, for Concord, a Concord Avenue? What's happening? What's happening there? Yeah, uh, well, the uh, Board of Selectmen will receive a recommendation uh, for... Uh, from the uh, Traffic Advisory Committee to um, uh, basically uh, uh, restripe Concord Avenue to the, in which you would have a bike lane at the closest point to the, um, to the curb, uh, a parking, uh, parking for automobiles in, a, in, a, in a, like a middle lane, and then traffic in the, in, in, in the far lane, let's say. Um, now, this was approved five to three, so it wasn't a unanimous vote. And, Does that mean, and, Franklin, that there's some controversy about about uh, the, the the options? Yes, there is. I mean, they, what uh, there are there are a number of people. People live on Concord Avenue, and other people who said that maybe the maybe the even the assumption of safety isn't really in this um, new recommendation. Um, there and and I think the important thing is is that it's it's got very contentious. Uh, people are calling the the uh, chairman of the uh, committee, uh, David Coleman. You know, like some kind of um, <laughs> some somebody who who basically forced his own uh, his own will onto other people in the committee and onto the public. Um, and there are people who say that they, they if this goes through, they're going to sue the town. Or and or, or what you're also hearing is that people are saying, we're just not going to take this recommendation. We're going to go to the select board and we're going to we're going to we're going to bombard them with questions. So this recommendation will be defeated. So you have this committee who is who's, who is put together and, you know, for tra transportation issues. Right. They, they go through an, a, a more than a year process of discovering what would be the best thing for this uh, important corridor in town. And now what and now what's happening is that uh, people who are opposing to it say, well, we don't care about the committee and their work and 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 everything that they went through. We're going to go to the select board and, and pressure them to to defeat it. Now that that now you know now you you come to a, a you know a point of governance where you say why don't you just not even discuss you know not even appoint committees just let the select board hear from one side and another to decide important so, things. 
So Franklin, I do want to ask, I mean, given that this was a non-unanimous decision by by the committee, um, I mean, are we likely to see that that perhaps there will be a lack of unanimity on the select board as well? Probably, you know, the select board will decide, uh, you know, whether they're going to re to accept this recommendation or send it back for more study. And, you know, the easy thing to do is, as always, is to kick it down the road, <laughs> kick the can down the road and let them come back in six to eight months and see if there's uh, any better uh, resolution. A lot of this right. has to do with residents who are on the who are on the very beginning of Concord Avenue. They're seeing a lot of they're seeing spaces lost and they're going to try to defeat that 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 uh, this the, the the new striping, the new the new uh, arrangement for Concord Avenue. So, Franklin, just to understand what some of those concerns are about, is, is it that uh, residents will be losing parking in front of their homes? It's losing parking. There's also questions about safety. You know, if you have parking uh, in, a, in a further up lane, how do you look around? You know, if you're coming off a side street, that's a very legitimate complaint. Uh, there are other complaints who say, you know, um, if you're leaving your car, if you're an older person and you leave your car and you're in that center lane, you could ro walk right into traffic. But, you know, you don't see that right now when people are on, on a congested street like Beach Street, you know, so. All right, well, we'll have to see what happens there. Um, let me ask you, let me ask you to update folks on um, girls rugby and lacrosse. Yes, it's the spring season and the sports are underway. And uh, our rugby team, our girls rugby team, which is, has won three consecutive state championships, they got underway against their biggest rival, Lincoln Sudbury, and they defeated them pretty handily um, uh, last week. Uh, they had a, they, it looks like they have just a wonderful team, uh, a lot of senior leadership, and uh, they, they really uh, put a hammer down on their uh, closest rival. So that's good. <laughs> the, right. cross is, the cross has, uh, is, uh, is a team that's re being really built for uh, defense. They're a really great defensive team. They're, they're three and two. Um, uh, you know, when they, get, when they get their defense up and, and do two on one, tracking of the ball on the, on the opponent's offense they do a really good job it's a it's a, it's an exciting crew to look at all right um all right franklin so um anything more to say about sports well uh all the teams are out in, in um are uh, out there and uh uh, so, but, you know, this week we, we've had uh, spring break or, you know, uh, spring recess. And next week and for the next uh, five weeks, we're going to just see a lot of sports. So get out there, you know. Um, okay. They're going to be playing at Harris Field and um, on the fields beside it. And, you know, have uh, and, and baseball is right now at uh, uh, playing in Waltham because we don't have a field anymore for baseball. Uh, but um, it's, it's rather exciting. Go see the kids. All right, Franklin, that's good advice. We'll see you next time. And if you'd like to see more of Franklin's reporting, be sure to visit belmontonian.com.